welcome back again. <coughs> so, in today's class, we will be discussing uh, periodic orbits. Uh, especially their existence. So, these are also referred to as closed orbits or paths. So, the existence of periodic orbits is an <coughs> important part of qualitative theory and quite useful with respect to many physical and other applications. Uh, I am not going to prove <coughs> any result in this discussion, uh, mainly because the proofs are quite involved and they also require new concepts and tools. I will try to explain the results through some examples and through some pictures. Uh, the discussion is <coughs> restricted to two D systems. And with regard to 2D system, there are fairly general results. So, the, those things we are going to discuss. The uh, main, <coughs> the important theorem with regard to, t to 2D autonomous system is the celebrated Poincare Bendixson theorem. which will be <coughs> coming more or less at the end of this hour. Okay. So, since we are <coughs> discussing only 2D systems, so let me change a notation little bit and write our system as x dot equal to f of x y autonomous. So, there is no t dependence on the right hand fun functions. So, g x y. So, x and y are the unknown functions of t and this is our 2 D system. Okay. So, we would like to <coughs> discuss the existence of periodic orbits for this system 1. So, what are the necessary conditions? What are the sufficient conditions? There are only sufficient conditions. Necessary conditions are too hard to come by. Uh, there are some okay, that will uh, discuss them. Okay. So, recall again uh, from the general <coughs> uh, lemmas we have learnt about uh, autonomous systems. So, let me recall that. So, in this 2 D setup, if x t, so let me write that y t is a solution of 1 satisfying x of t 0 plus t is equal to x t 0 and y of t 0 plus t equal to y t 0 for some t 0 and t positive then x t plus t equal to x t and y of t plus t is equal to y t for all t. 
So, thus the solution is periodic. So, this we have already seen in a general context. So, in particular this is true for uh, this 2 D system. So, our <coughs> first result let me state it as theorem 1. So, any periodic orbit so orbit uh, that is related to a periodic solution that is periodic orbit any periodic orbit necessarily surrounds surrounds and at least one ok an equilibrium point of one of one ok. So, <coughs> So, let me just uh, what does this mean? So, this suppose C is a periodic orbit of 1, orbit of 1. So, in the phase space, so it will be like this, ok. So, that will be C, ok. So, described by a periodic solution of the system 1. So, the interior of C, so that is what is meant by the surrounding. So, there is at least one equilibrium. So, this is equilibrium. Okay. So, theorem 1 is in some sense a negative result. So, theorem 1 implies that uh, no equilibrium points point implies no periodic ok. So, <coughs> so in order to have periodic orbits necessarily the system 1 has to have some equilibrium points ok. So, let me just briefly describe how this theorem 1 is proved. So, that is where the new tools, new concepts uh, and new ideas come in and uh, they are bit advanced. So, just let me uh, restrict myself to a discussion of that ok. So, let me just discuss that. So, to prove theorem 1, uh, the concept of an index ok, this also called Poincare index. So, let me just Poincare index is introduced. Hmm. So, let me just briefly discuss what does that mean. So, this is again very <coughs> specific to 2D. So, this even this uh, uh, <coughs> concept of index. So, you consider any closed curve ok, not necessarily an orbit or curve in the phase space.
in the phase plane where in R 2. Okay, so, that is R 2. So, let me describe <coughs> uh, how the index is defined. So, this is Okay. Suppose <coughs> this, so at every point on the curve, you just compute this f x y g x y this vector. So, this is in R 2 now. So, that is the reason why you call system 1 as a vector field. So, vector, vector field. Okay. Suppose this <coughs> vector is non-zero vector at all points of C. Okay, then it defines a definite direction. Okay, so let me just draw here. So this is so this say x zero y zero a specific thing, and this is f of x zero y zero. g of x 0 y 0. Okay. So, we say that this vector field is non vanishing on this closed curve c. Okay. So, then at all points on the curve this vector has a unique direction. So, we can measure its angle from some fixed direction say x axis. Okay. So, we can just keep it here x axis. So, we measure the angle of this vector with respect to this axis and then you start moving along the curve. Okay. So, you so just move along this thing. So, they may just depending on f. Okay. So, you do that. So, you have draw all the vectors along this and then you come back. Then you come back and again you measure the angle at the point we started with. Okay. And so, uh, measure the angle at a starting point x 0 y 0 on c. Okay. Then make a round. So, you keep on measuring the angles at all points, make a counter clockwise round, clockwise uh, movement, okay. movement along C and return to return to that starting point again okay. and then measure measure the angle again. Angle again. So, the difference <coughs> the difference will be 2 pi k. So, k is an integer. So, it could be positive, it could be negative or it could even be 0. Okay. So, that is what you do. So, this k is called. <coughs> so, take some simple examples of closed curve like circles, ellipses and you take a vector field which is non vanishing on that close curve and then try to uh, measure this uh, angle. So, there is an analytic formula for this uh, angle measurement, I will describe that in a minute. So, first the definition, so this k is called 
the index of C. So, here the vector field is fixed that f and g that is coming from our system 1. So, that is why we are not otherwise that is also part of the definition, but we have fixed that vector field f g. Okay. So, f and g are assumed to be smooth, smooth enough. So, the analytical formula for this k is analytical uh, description. Analytic description. So, k is equal to 1 by 2 pi. So, this is a contour integral over C. So, f d g minus g d f. This is just by taking the angle, angle is in terms of arc tan of g by f and then you work out and this will be the definition. And since we are dividing by f square plus g square, you see that assumption is necessary that uh, this f the vector field is non vanishing on c otherwise we will have trouble there. Okay. So, this is a line integral. So, when you uh, have a parametric representation of this closed curve c then this d g and d f will be expressed in that thing. So, it will be a uh, one dimensional integral. Okay. So, I am not going uh, to that details. Okay. So, one important observation about this index and that is very much used in proof of theorem 1 and this is the key observation. Okay. So, you start with c again whatever c is okay. you <coughs> determine its in index. So, if you <coughs> deform this thing this close curve smoothly to another close curve c tilde. So, this smooth deformation. Okay. So, there are again very precise description of this thing in terms of mappings. Okay. So, again I am not going to do that this is the thing. Okay. The only requirement is this deformation should happen without crossing without passing through any without that is important any equilibrium points of system 1. Okay. So, when we deform this C into C tilde, so nowhere we should come across the equilibrium points of 1. Okay. So, that is that we should keep in mind. Okay. Then one proves this is the important observation the index index of C is same as index of C theta. Okay. So, that is one important observation. Okay. So, in particular <coughs> if a closed curve is C is such that in the interior of that C if there are no equilibrium points of 1 then I can keep on deforming, deforming and make this length of this closed curve very small and eventually going to 0. So, what we get is so, <coughs> so thus if the closed curve C does not contain 
any equilibrium points of 1 in its interior ok that is important in its interior. So, I can keep on doing this deformation we see that index of C is 0. Okay. So, whereas one can show so whereas one can show one can show there are many results in compute computation of indices so it's one of them if C is a periodic orbit of 1, then of the system 1, then its index is equal to 1. Okay. So, these are deep, deep results, they are not, not at all trivial results, and if you compare the previous. Uh, remark and uh, this result you will see that theorem 1 is both. Okay. So, the next result, <coughs> so let me state it as theorem 2. So, this proves uh, this implies theorem 1. theorem 2 this is called Bendixson's criterion again in some sense it is a negative result if in any region I will write script R of the phase plane this quantity divergence of the vector field uh, del f by del x plus del g by del y okay, f and g are smooth functions. So, this is in 2 d this is referred to a divergence of the vector field f g has definite sign. So, that is either it is greater than 0 or in R at all points in R. Okay. So, either it is positive or negative, then one cannot have periodic orbits. in R. In that region, the system 1 cannot have periodic orbits. So, this is a simple consequence of Green's theorem. So, let me just describe that. So, Green's theorem in 2 D. So, it is something like integration by parts. So, there are of course, some certain smoothness assumptions on the curve and the domain. Okay, I am not uh, explicitly saying them. Okay, so, if <coughs> again in just in terms of the f and g, let me state that. So, if so, let better write this c, this is d. Okay, if c is a smooth closed curve, curve, 
Oscar win R2 with D as its interior as in the figure. then this integral d of the divergence okay del f by del x plus del g by del y del g by del y so this is double integral dx dy and this is given by line integral c this f d y minus g d x. So, when you parameterize the curve c, so d y and d x will be expressed in that terms of parameterization. So, this will be a one dimensional integral that is line integral contour integral line integral. Okay. So, now if this region does have a periodic orbit then I can take that as C if this given region uh, has a closed orbit to get a contradiction. And when C is a periodic orbit you see that using the system 1 the right hand side is 0, 0 if C is a periodic orbit. And whereas, by hypothesis the left hand side is non zero, since this del f the divergent del f by del x del g by del y has a definite sign. So, the left hand side will be non zero left hand side. L h s will be non zero and that contradiction proves that the region will not have uh, any periodic orbits. Okay. So, now we go to the <coughs> celebrated uh, Poincare Bendixon theorem. So, let R be a compact region in the phase plane. So, that means, it is comp bounded and closed and bounded not containing any equilibrium points points of 1. So, let me state that not ok not containing <coughs> suppose an orbit so, let me write it since we are only in two dimensions. So, let me just write explicitly x t y t. So, that is a solution of system 1 enters 
the region for example, it can start in region R, region R or it can even come from somewhere else enter the region R at time t equal to t 0 and stays in R for all t Okay, so, this is the assumption on the orbit. So, either it can start in the region R at some time t equal to t 0 and then never leaves that region R for all future times or it can enter the region R at t equal to t 0 and then it does not leave the region for all future times. Okay. So, this is the hypothesis on the orbit, then the conclusion this orbit itself is a periodic orbit ok. If not, <coughs> so there are only two alternatives or it approaches a periodic orbit as t tends to infinity. So, <coughs> thus under the hypothesis under the hypothesis one uh, will always have periodic orbits So, this is to some extent a satisfactory result. So, it uh, under this assumptions on the orbit, uh, it gives the existence of periodic solutions, but however, if you look at the uh, <coughs> hypothesis, it is somewhat difficult to verify in a general situation. This can be done in particular situations but to uh, say that an orbit entering the region R will stay there for all time that requires again some analysis and it is not easy to verify in a general context. So, there are some simplified <coughs> theorems we will state one of them uh, which are specific to second order equations. So, this remember this is valid for first order systems and this is more general than that, but whereas in that other theorem of Leonard we are going to state that the verification <coughs> is directly in terms of the uh, functions involved in the equation and not uh, in terms of the orbits of the equation. Okay. So, so that is there is one difference. So, let me just uh, briefly discuss the hypothesis, the contents and the conclusions of the Poincare Bendixson theorem. So, if you compare <coughs> theorem 1, so compare with compare with theorem 1. Okay. Theorem 1 says if there are no equilibrium points, then there are no periodic orbits. Whereas, Poincare Bendixson theorem requires that compact region not to have any uh, equilibrium points. So, how should that look like that compact region 
uh, in the hypothesis of Poincare Bendixson theorem, how should it look like? So, it should look like uh, typically an annulus type. Okay. So, this is so something like that, and there is another one here, and there is some let me call it x0, y0. Okay. So, x0, y0 is an equilibrium point of 1. system 1 okay and this is r okay so this is a typical example of r a compact closed and bounded of r in poincare appendix Okay. So, the requirement there is okay. so an orbit of 1 it enters may be at time t equal to 0 here t equal to t 0, but once it enters it will stay there. For so, you can just visualize that it may be approaching a periodic orbit. Okay. So, this the state that it stays in that r forces that orbit to uh, approach a periodic orbit. We will see some examples, okay, some simple examples we will see. And okay, so, examples. So, these illustrate uh, the Poincare Bendixson theorem. So, this first one let me just state that. So, x dot equal to minus y minus y plus x into 1 minus x square minus y square y dot is equal to x plus y into 1 minus x square minus y square. So, because of the presence of x square plus y square it is <coughs> Uh, convenient to express this equations in polar coordinates. So, usual polar coordinates. So, introduce and these are helpful in many situations in 2D systems. Introduce polar coordinates. So, in instead of uh, variables x y, we have r and theta. R cos theta y is equal to R sin theta. Okay. And now, we would like to have differential equations for R and theta from the given equations from x and y and in general you see that. So, compute this thing this is not, not at all difficult. Okay. So, this you can also check check simple algebra r r dot is equal to x x dot plus y y dot. Okay. And you also for theta you have that r square theta dot is equal to x y dot minus y x dot. Okay. So, this is a more general set if you introduce this polar coordinates x equal to r cos theta y equal to r sin theta. So, then we will have 
differential equations for r and theta given by this. And now, if you substitute the given expressions for uh, x dot and y dot, okay, so this implies. So I have this. I let me write that thing, and you can easily check that r dot is equal to r into one minus r square. So, you already see that it is coming from that x square plus y square expressions over okay, here <coughs> and theta dot equal to 1. Okay. So, in this setup you see the r and theta variable they are decoupled. Okay. So, r does not depend on theta and theta does not depend on r. So, we can separately solve for them. Okay. Whereas, the original system x and y are coupled very much. Okay. So, we can solve that thing, but before that, so uh, let us see the applicability of uh, Poincare Bendixson theorem. Okay. So, just so if you consider this annulus. consider the annulus let me call it r so this is half less than or equal to r less than or equal to 2 okay so that's the annulus so this so this is And this is and here 0 0 is the only equilibrium point that is you can check 0 0 is the only equilibrium point point. So, this R does not contain that because we are away from the R. Okay. And now, if you look at the equation for R, you see that R dot equal to R 1 minus R square and in the <coughs> on the internal spheres. So, at R equal to half, so R dot is positive and at R equal to 2, r dot is negative. So, that means, if an orbit in r try to approach the boundary of inner sphere, it will be again pushed back in the region, because r dot is positive. So, as soon as it comes here, it has to again go back in the region. And when the orbit tries to leave the upper, uh, the outer <coughs> surface of the outer sphere, outer circle, then it will be pushed in because r dot is negative. Okay. So, something comes here again it has to be pushed down okay. and here if it comes here it has to be pushed inside this, uh, this annulus. Okay. So, therefore, an orbit which enters or which starts there enters starts in R will remain in R for all future times. Okay. So, this is what I was telling. So, in this particular case we are able to uh, <coughs> prove that the orbit never leaves the region R once it enters there or when it starts there. So, this, but in general it may be difficult. Okay. So, Poincare Bendixson theorem implies that 
Bendixson implies existence of a periodic orbit. In one, in R, it will be there. Okay. <coughs> so, in fact, in this case, we can explicitly construct that. So, again recall we have this thing r dot equal to r into 1 minus r square and theta dot equal to 1. Okay. So, explicitly we have this. So, solve we get r is equal to 1 plus c e to the minus 2 t to the minus half and theta is equal to you can just write t plus t 0, t 0 is some arbitrary constant, c is also a constant. Okay. So, therefore, we have x t is equal to r cos t plus t t 0 and y t is equal to r sin t plus t 0 okay. and t 0 and this constant c are fixed by <coughs> the initial condition. So, suppose c is equal to 0, suppose c is equal to zero. then r is identically 1 from that equation. So, this <coughs> in this case this implies the yes, and certainly that is periodic solution. So, r equal to 1 is a periodic. So, we are explicitly finding in this case that r equal to 1 is a periodic orbit and it is that orbit is obtained by taking s t is equal to cos of t plus t 0 and y t equal to sin of t plus t 0. Okay. So, let me just draw that. Okay. So, this is 1. So, you put the arrow appropriately in which directions counter clockwise clockwise direction. Okay. So, let me not uh, do that thing and when c is negative just look at here if c is negative this quantity is uh, this maybe there is some c there okay. if c is negative then this is less than 1 and we are taking in the denominator so r will be bigger than 1 so this if c is less than 1 uh, less than 0 r will be bigger than 1. So, the orbit starts outside this circle of radius 1 and eventually approaches ok. Let me use different color it eventually approaches or it can do it counter clockwise also. So, if c is so this is c negative ok. So, for every c negative you get such an orbit okay. and when c is positive. So, this is more than 1. So, you are in the denominator. So, then r will be less than 1. So, c positive okay, r will be less than 1. So, from inside it will be approaching that either clockwise or counter clockwise. Okay. It will not go on that thing. Okay. So, just it will approach that. that is the c equal to c positive okay, in this picture. So, you can try a similar example. So, let me just uh, 
say that ok. So, example 2 x dot is equal to 4 x plus 4 y minus x square plus y square y dot is equal to minus 4 x plus 4 y minus y same thing. So, and again you, you in introduce the polar coordinates r theta, it is similar to the previous example, but there is some subtle difference. I would like you to work it out and see what the difference is. Okay. So, here we have r dot is equal to r 4 minus r square. r square. So, again and theta dot is different. Theta dot is minus 4 I suppose. Okay. And this makes a difference. Okay, work it out from the previous uh, example. So, again this uh, r equal to 2 is a periodic So, now you work in the region, work in the region r say 1 less than or equal to r. Okay. Okay. So, now next I will describe this Lenard's theorem, theorem 4. Okay. This theorem is very well motivated by the Van der Paul equation. So, in fact, the hypotheses are well suited to that Van der Paul equation. So, this applies to uh, <coughs> second order equations. So, x double dot plus f x x dot plus g g x equal to g. So, f and g are smooth functions. Okay. So, f are c 1 functions. Satisfy G is odd that is G of minus x is minus G of x. So, necessarily G of 0 is 0 and G of x is positive for x positive. f is even. So, that is f of minus x is equal to f of x and if I integrate now little f that will be an odd function and the odd function
f of x capital f of x which is integral 0 to x f s d s. So, I you integrate this e 1 function. Okay. So, the requirement on capital F has a unique positive root a positive root and f x is positive and uh, and okay. for x bigger than a and approach is infinity as x tends to infinity. Okay. So, as I said earlier, now the hypothesis is purely in terms of the coefficients of the equation. So, no orbits are involved here. Okay. It is purely in terms of uh, the coefficients in the equation. Okay. So, somewhat easier to verify than the Poincare Bendixson theorem. Okay. So, here p here is the picture of f. So, this is f since it is odd it is 0 here and we require another 0 here. So, it is negative here okay, and okay, I did not say that and f x is negative for 0 x less than. So, this is f okay, and g is that is positive there. Conclusion. conclusion there exist a unique okay so there is more unique periodic orbit okay and here in this case you can easily check that. So, 0 0 is the only equilibrium point in this case. And there is more to it. So, any other orbit will spirally approach that periodic orbit. Okay. So, the example as I said it is motivated by the van der Paul equation. So, recall this x double dot plus mu x square minus 1 x dot plus x and mu is positive. Okay. So, here this is our uh, f x in the Lenard's theorem and this is g. So, capital F of x will be just mu x cube by 3 minus x. So, you see that there is a positive root namely root 3 <coughs> and that will remain positive after that. Okay. Okay, so, the Lenard's theorem implies theorem implies that u existence of unique, unique periodic zone. Okay. So, with that thing we will come to an end of this discussion on periodic orbits.